it. So good call. Can you guys see that? Yeah, we can see it. Okay, can you see me move forward through it? No, you're like not presenting yet. Okay. There we go. All right, so just a little bit about what we're gonna talk about today. So we're gonna give you a little bit of overview of our org, so our mission and our vision and kind of the people that are a part of it. Um, we'll talk about our clients and the work we do, the solutions that we provide to them and kind of the growth that we're on as an org. And then we'll talk about the intern program and the mini course if you are a freshman. Yeah, so going into kind of like the mission vision of our org, which and it's important to know because it surrounds like everything we do. We're getting later about like the two different verticals we run, but that all ties back to kind of our main mission, which is providing professional business services to nonprofits and local businesses um, through our students. And you can see in our mission, like it goes from students to clients to community, and that's structured in a very like mindful way because everything we do is through the students, and everything we do is mainly for the students' experience or learning program or piece of our organization. And that naturally gravitates to impact our clients, which in turn impact the community through their nonprofit work or through their local businesses. So it's structured in a very intentional way. As far as our vision, it's to be the most strategic partner for our clients and our partners as they journey to providing a positive impact in their communities. So this kind of again hits on the point where we're trying to provide services and um, resources for these clients and partners in order for them to further impact the community. So by helping them out, we're enabling growth for them to be able to expand their services in a larger community and be able to benefit more people, uh, which is pretty critical and like engaging with them. Um, going on to the next, looking over kind of like a broader impact that we have. So this is from like a geographical impact perspective. So you can see in red, those are all the clients or the countries we've been able to impact through our work and through the clients we've been engaged with. Um, I'll highlight down in like Africa, um, we actually run a microloan program in Kenya, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, so this kind of helps you put a perspective as far as like the, like how broad of an impact we make. We've mentioned a couple other ways too, like through sustainable development goals, and like the amount of industries we've worked in as well, because we don't work with like one type of like nonprofit or business. Like we run kind of like a huge net of work within our different programs and our different client projects. And then if you're interested more about learning our, about our impact too, this year we released our first ever annual report, which is actually published on our website. So that can give you a little bit more perspective of like what type of work we've done to be able to um, claim this most impact. Yeah. And then finally, kind of going into the history of our organization. So we may, or we are about 11 years old now, um, but in reality, we're probably about four or five years since we've been functioning as we are now. So 10 years ago, um, we were founded off as a division of Flyer Enterprises. Um, back then we were a for-profit consulting firm um, providing like consulting services for a fee. Uh, this didn't work out originally because as students, it's kind of hard to sell your services as like an expert in order to consult um, when you're still a student in college and don't necessarily have the career experience. So um, we kind of reevaluated ourselves in spring of like 2016. And that's when we kind of formed ourselves where we are now, which is a separate entity from Flyer Enterprises. And our own organization focused more on building like a community impact rather than offering like for-profit services. Um, so kind of looking at our history since then, back then we were running about four client projects. That was the only type of work we were doing. Um, we had around like 20 consultants in the organization. Um, and since then we've continually grown year after year, um, first through adding our first ever international client, which actually this year is our second 
ever international client, which is a project that Grace is on, which is really cool. Um, we also were working on a project with Notre Dame and McKinsey. Um, if you guys don't know, McKinsey is a huge consulting firm, one of the big, I think it's called the big five consulting firms. Um, and then since then we launched Flyer Development, which is our micro lending vertical, which we'll get into a little bit later. But looking at where we are today from like the 20 consultants and four client projects, we've actually expanded to being able to take on five clients a semester with a lot more tangible and a lot cooler work than we were working on before. And now we have around 40 consultants in the organization. So we've doubled in size. And then we've spun off that second vertical of flyer development. So we're at a really strategic and cool point within our organization of being in the middle of all these new growth opportunities and in the future hopefully spring off another vertical that engages with small and medium-sized businesses to consult with them. Um, so kind of like that's the history of our organization. Um, Laura's going to kind of brief you over kind of the two different verticals that we we're talking about. Yeah, so um, one thing that we want to make very clear throughout this is that Flyer Consulting does have two different verticals. There's the nonprofit consulting side, and then there's the Flyer development side. But we are all part of the one organization of Flyer Consulting. So um, if Grace, you want to show what, so as for the nonprofit consulting side of things, we um, focus on projects under three main umbrellas of technology, business development, and marketing. And so each semester, the clients that we take on, which we take on our clients on a semester basis. So um, as Nolan was explaining right now, we have about five clients and we'll be working with them for the semester and they cover these main um, sort of basises and that's the projects that we're working on each and every semester. And um, after this, we're gonna go into depth about what exactly each entails. Yes, so um, I'm just gonna start off by describing a technical client that I had the pleasure of working with um, this past fall, so one year ago. Um, I got to work on a tech project for a nonprofit called Aileron. So they are a local nonprofit that helps take privately held businesses, teams, cultures, and individuals to like the next level of growth through um, like work sessions, communication one-on-one, -on -one, group talking sessions, um, and different strategies that they have for leadership and project management. So the project I worked on, we were able to help um, improve their back and forth process when they are potential clients or trying to schedule a meeting with a, uh, an aileron employee so they have facilitators that try and help their employee or try and help clients um turn over into like current clients and then also help to grow their business so they have that a lot of back and forth we were able to implement a service called calendly for them and then also integrate their calendly with their hubspot crm um and then we also were able to perform some text analysis on their current responses of their form for potential clients and tell them ways that they can improve their data entry points. So we did like a lot of data analysis and suggestions and in turn, we were actually able to take away nine steps from the customer acquisition process, saving both Aileron and their potential customers time and saving Aileron money because it automated the step of manual review and assigning to facilitators. Um, and overall, we were able to help organize Aileron by giving them a CRM to keep track of their meeting minutes with clients, allowing for a more efficient relationship with each of their customers. And then our other portfolio, which is business development. So that really focuses on strategic growth and the analysis of the company. So what are their goals and how can we help them get there? So. I'm going to talk a little bit about the top one, FEMA Aid Collaborative, which is the project I worked on last semester. So what they are is they're a Dayton-based nonprofit that's striving to end period poverty in the region. So that provides women with proper menstrual products because a lot of people don't have access to that. Um, so what we did for them was we analyzed their operational efficiency um, in order to like identify areas where they could improve their process. So they got a lot of donations of products, but then how can we streamline that so it's easy for them to pick up those donations and then get them out to those that are in need of them most. 
Um, also, we helped create a long-term funding and donor strategy to ensure that they could provide those services in the future. So FEMA Aid was very new. They weren't even a, new, a year old when we started working with them. And so it was important that they had a framework so they could continue all their work into the future. Um, and we also looked at an ambassador program for them. So how can they get more community awareness and have other people in Dayton help them achieve their mission? So really in the long term, they, we increased the efficiency of their product collection and we're able to have more resources provided for those in need. Yeah, and then the last uh, portfolio that I'm gonna talk about is our marketing portfolio. Um, so this ranges from everything to rebranding. Um, we'll do like logo designs, um, brand structure analysis, things like that. Um, all the way going to more technical marketing like SEO, um, things like that. Um, the project I'm going to talk about is with a local nonprofit organization um, that works to aid local business owners um, as they kind of progress through their journey of starting their business. Um, so this was a two semester project, actually. Um, normally, our project cycles, uh, like Lauren said, go on a one semester basis. Um, this client was really cool because we had one semester um, followed immediately by another semester where we did kind of two um, related areas of work um, but with two different teams, which was really cool. Um, so the whole project was focused on rebranding um, and the first semester was looking at um, their current state of their brand, a brand analysis, um, and then crafting some recommendations based on that. Um, and the second semester was actually implementing a lot of this and providing some resources that they could use um, throughout the process of their rebranding. Um, so just the impact to the client, obviously increasing their brand equity um, and their recognition here in the local Dayton area. Um, also, the kind of structure of their programs was really confusing um, and just their offerings. It was kind of difficult to see where you would fit into their programs. Um, so by going through this rebranding, um, we were able to help them kind of clarify that um, and help clients see where they would actually fit into their uh, organization. So uh, as Lauren mentioned earlier, we have two verticals with Flyer Consulting. Um, you guys just heard about the nonprofit consulting vertical. So Flyer Development is the newest vertical. Um, it started about two years ago, um, but Flyer Development seeks um, to help entrepreneurial growth by providing capital, uh, both locally and abroad. Um, so it's comprised of two separate teams that you can see here, international and local. Internationally, we work with a Marianist organization in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, called the Imani Marianists. Um, working with them, we manage a microloan fund by lending to Kenyan entrepreneurs. We made our first loan around this time last year. Um, and since then we've lent over $14,000 to uh, local entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in Nairobi. Um, and we're planning on lending more um, throughout the future. Um, locally, we have partnered with the Greater West Dayton Incubator. Um, and we've developed a micro loan fund here that will provide capital for women and minority owned businesses in the Dayton area. Uh, we haven't lent any money yet, but we hope to have our first loan made by the end of the semester. Um, and then both local and international manage the fund. So we manage the application, we assess the applicants and then actually lend the money. So it's a really cool experience um, that not a lot of people will get. Um, and again, it's a Definitely, it's still the same as Flyer Consulting, just a different vertical. Yeah, so just to kind of touch on our strategic partners a little bit. Um, so we partner with both national and local um, strategic, eh, not strategic partners, but uh, consulting firms. Um, so they'll actually come to us for things like interns, full-time positions, um, professional development opportunities, things like that. Um, so just great connections to have um, and it's really been beneficial having them um, as partners to the org. Um, they'll come in and they'll do presentations. Um, they'll talk to us about consulting as a career, um, lots of different professional development opportunities like that. Okay, so really what we want to talk about too while we're here is the base of everything we do starts with our people. So we're so happy you guys are here to learn about applying. So what that includes is first recruitment. So we have a lot of channels as you guys have, I'm sure heard. Um, but then once you're recruited, there's a training process. So that's what we call our intern program. Um, that's structured training. And Elizabeth will talk a little bit more about what the, all that entails 
um, later, but we also then prioritize promotion um, throughout like leadership and subject matter expert positions. So once you're in the org, you'll be promoted from within. So there's different levels. So after you complete the intern process, you'll be a consultant on your first project, which is semester based as we talked about. Um, if you are interested in other leadership, there is another step up, which is the project lead. So you'll handle all communication with the client. So you'll make sure that whatever the client vision is, the consultants are able to execute on that work. And then managing director, that is the higher level project, and they will oversee the project lead and the team of consultants on each engagement. So I'll pass it over to Elizabeth to talk a little bit more about the intern program. Yeah, so just to explain this a little bit, the intern program is what the application is now open for, for all sophomores and juniors. And within Flyer Consulting, every member first starts out as an intern, just to familiarize themselves um, before becoming um, a consultant on a client engagement. So throughout the semester, there are some case studies centered around each one of our portfolio elements but it also um, explores different skills such as data analysis, client engagement, and professionalism. So just to touch on each one of these skills that you can see on the screen, first is project management. So the interns really get to learn about staying organized and communicating with team members again throughout the entire semester on those case studies. Next is professional development. There's a study or there's a training on um, LinkedIn, networking, um, some interview help, but we also like to stress professional behavior within um, client interactions because again, um, we are a client-based org. And then next is public speaking. So not only are the case studies a great way to practice those public speaking skills, but there's also a training completely dedicated to it. Um, it focuses on body language and voice, as well as anchor points and stuff like that. And then moving forward, there's also Excel and Tableau training, where um, those are just the technical skills that we like to teach our interns, um, which will really help set you apart from your other classmates. And then lastly, the client processes and consulting. So throughout this program, you'll really get to learn about consulting as a career and see if that's a potential path that you want to take if it interests you. And once again, it just really familiarizes you with our org and how we do work with our clients. And then on the next slide, I'm just going to explain each case study a little bit more. So first is the marketing case study. Um, interns will start off just analyzing a nonprofit's current state and creating an extensive marketing plan. Um, based off of what they find. So this also includes some 990 analysis just to incorporate financials as well. And it's really a good way to dive deep into some digital marketing, target market identification, um, as well as some partnerships just to get a really good first overview of some marketing skills. And then our, the next case study is the donor engagement one, which is the more technical of the um, studies where interns will be able to use some Tableau um, in order to do a data analysis and also figure out how to optimize that strategy um, and move forward from there to give some recommendations based off of what they find, if there's any trends in that data, um, stuff like that. And then next is the business development case study. So this one is where interns will be able to create an all-encompassing strategic growth plan um, for that nonprofit um, identi identify key areas of growth and um, opportunities that they can recommend for in the future. And once again, it also stresses some financial analysis as well, um, just to again, analyze those trends um, for moving forward. And then lastly, there's also a flyer development case study, um, just to familiarize with the second vertical of our organization as what was um, previously explained. And this one is all about loans, um, the complete um, review of the application, as well as the approval process. And then I'm gonna pass it over back to Grace to talk about our application that's open now. Yeah, guys, so our application is open and on flyerconsulting.com. 
Um, keep in mind that we do have a little bit of a shorter recruiting window this semester because we want to make sure that you get the most out of our intern program and all that training before the semester ends at Thanksgiving. So that application does close Friday at noon. Um, the intern application is open to all sophomores and juniors. I'll let Nolan talk a little bit about the mini course if you're a freshman here in a minute. Um, but once we review your application, if you're selected for an interview, that's a two round process. So the first interview is just a behavioral style interview and we're gonna conduct all those on Zoom due to the in-person restrictions. And then the second round, you'll be asked to do a mini analysis of a nonprofit and identify like a pain point that they're experiencing and a solution that you would pitch to them. So again, that's for sophomores and juniors and that is Friday at noon that that closes. And so Nolan then can talk a little bit about the freshman opportunity. Yeah, so since our application isn't open up to freshmen until their second semester, the first semester for four first years, we offer a mini course taught by us. So it's an eight week long course. Um, this year is gonna be ranging from October 5th to November 23rd. Um, it's actually taught by us. There's no like, um, like I don't know if you call them like adult professors like in the room. So what we do is we go through um, some of the different experiences and solution sets that we work on in projects and it kind of dip your guys' toes into like what that type of work looks like. So we we worked it over the summer so that um, this year is going to be even more engaging. Um, each kind of experience that we go through, whether it be like the marketing portfolio or like the business development work, um, we're going to be coupling that with some like minor like uh, case studies or just some walkthroughs of like different tools that we use to engage with those different portfolios. Um, if you're a first year student, I really highly recommend attending this mini course. One, it's a great way to learn more about our organization and get a step up um, in the spring semester when the application opens to first years. Um, but two, it's also just a great introduction to a lot of different facets of like the business school and the work we do in the business school, as well as what consulting looks like as a career. Um, so that's open to anyone. Um, the application is open right now to it. Um, it's on our website. Um, we'll be closing it, I believe, not this Friday, but next Friday. Or I take it back. I think it's the 18th. So there's yeah, still it's a couple the 18th. More weeks. Yeah. So there's a couple more weeks still up to apply for that one. Um, Right now we have 22 slots if we can teach in person, which we're really hoping for. And then after those 22 slots get filled up, um, we're hoping to also offer like a Zoom version of the course. So that way we don't have to limit um, the amount of people who can attend it. But I highly recommend, um, we, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about the course. But yeah, yeah, I'll turn it back to Grace. Yeah, so we just wanna thank you guys for coming and listening today. We're gonna to open up the floor for any questions you guys have, but like he said, like Nolan said, all that stuff's online, so check it out. Give us an email if you have any questions. Um, a lot of people ask us what our favorite part about being in Flyer Consulting is. So just some of the answers that we've given to give you a little context. So a lot of people in the org would say their favorite part is the people because it's a very motivated group. I always say it's like working in a group project where everyone pulls their weight. So it's awesome. I don't think I'll ever find it in the working world like quite a group of motivated people. Um, another benefit is getting experience outside the classroom and outside your major. So Let's say you are a marketing major, you can learn a lot that won't be in your classes so you can get some hands-on SEO or SEM experience or rebranding experience. Um, but then if you wanna work in not your major and you wanna be on a finance or a tech project, that's great experience that you wouldn't get in the classroom. So we'll open it up for questions now. If you guys have anything, please feel free to jump in. Yeah. And you can either like, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, how do you guys pick or assign teams to work with specific clients? Yeah, so every year um, we review. So during the process, too, as we go through like the intern program and like we're working on client projects, we're also taking in potential clients for the next semester. So I would say on average, we get like, like 10 to 15 client applications of which we like take four of them or five of them now. Uh, but as far as like how we pick teams, so we communicate with 
interns as they go up throughout the intern program and kind of look at their skill sets as well as what they're interested in, what type of work they like doing. And then we pair them with a team that kind of map, best matches that. So if you're someone who likes more finance and working with like loan processes and you really enjoy like the flower development case study, then we'll shift those interns once they graduate from the intern program into like the flyer development vertical or if they're more interested in working on like per se like a marketing project or doing technical work um we'll shift into like the nonprofit consulting vertical and put those them on those types of projects and then each semester we reevaluate the org so we'll move because we take different clients each semester so we'll move all of those teams around and then we'll move people within fire development vertical and the nonprofit consulting vertical based on like what they want to do in the work. Thank you. Anybody Any else? Questions? You guys can also put them in the chat too, if you don't want to unmute. Hi. Thank you guys for like sharing all that information. It was awesome. Um, I was just wondering like what would you say is like the most challenging but like rewarding part of like doing flyer consulting? Um, I'll go ahead and say the most challenging part for me is just like learning to balance your time because like we said the work we do is unpaid so but it's very rewarding because you're making a direct impact. Um, but there's also various levels of involvement. So however much time you can give, you can choose where to be involved. Um, but once you kind of learn that time management, it's not really a hurdle anymore. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I would say uh, one, wait, what was your, the, sorry, what was your question? What was the first part? Like I, what's the most like challenging part? Okay. That's what I thought. <laughs> All right, so I would say the most challenging part is like the learning curve that comes with every project, but that's also so re what, what's so rewarding. So um, essentially, like we were saying, each semester we're working on new clients, which means it's people coming to us with problems that we, you, we pro like most likely haven't seen before, but if we have seen like a similar issue, like for example, a rebranding project, Yes, we can take aspects of things we did in past projects, but then again, like everything specific for a specific nonprofit. So just being able to um, have those critical thinking skills is one of like the biggest thing I've, things I've learned here. It's asking the right questions. It's realizing how you can help these people. Um, the most rewarding part essentially is that um, it's asking these questions and finding these solutions for clients that are doing such amazing work they just right now don't have the resources to be answering all these questions for themselves. So uh, being able to be there for them and to help them find these solutions in order to help them um, like contribute to the community and like address their mission and values is amazing. It's such a mutually beneficial relationship and there's no way I'd rather spend my time. So. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Can you maybe, I know um, you said that like the application is due on Friday. Can you maybe give like a timeline about the rest of the recruitment process? Like are interviews going to be next week? Or are they the week after? Or is the first and second round during the same week? And then like when would intern training start? Yep. So we actually reviewed the applications the same day that they're due. So we'll review on Friday. So you should hear back um, that same day whether or not you're accepted for a first round. And then first round interviews are all next week. So there'll be Monday through Wednesday, um, may go into Thursday, depending on how many applicants we get. Um, and then those decisions are made Thursday and Friday. So you should hear sometime then. Um, and then second round interviews are the week after that. So we make our final decisions that Friday of the final week of interviews. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't get my camera to unmute. Any other questions? Grace, I have a question for you because this is a question I think some people might have but aren't asking. I'm a freshman and I know I have to take the mini course, but I really want to apply this semester. Should I do it or should I wait? What will you still accept me in the spring? What should I do? 
So you should, you can't take them any course. Is that what you know? Let's say I like, I just, I know I'm supposed to, but I really want to apply anyways. Um, should I do it? Should I wait? Like, what do you think? I think you should wait just because you'll have a more competitive chance when you come up the next semester because it's really hard. That's kind of what we make sure to, so that you give your best opportunity. So definitely take the mini course like Nolan said if you're able, um, but if you're not, don't worry. You'll still be a super competitive applicant come next semester. Yeah. Any other questions? Anybody else? It can literally be about anything. <laughs> um, I have a quick question. Um, do you guys know if the intern process is going to be over Zoom or will be in person yet? Um, so it depends on what the university's status is at that point. So ideally, if the university goes back to like a green or yellow status, we can, we're looking two ways to at least have some of the trainings in person, especially the ones that are more like technically demanding, like the Tableau training, the data analysis training. Uh, but if it's not possible to meet in person, then we will shift all everything online. Uh, that being said, like we had to wrap up last semester, our intern process online. So we kind of have a feel for like what some of the best practices are for like shifting course or like that type of like training virtually. But uh, yeah, so it just depends on where the university status is at. All right, thank you. So I have a class that um, unfortunately goes over the time of the eight week course this semester. So mm -hmm. are you guys planning on doing about the same time for your eight week course next semester or is that a little bit too far ahead? Um, so we only offer the course in the fall semester because that's like the gap where like freshmen are able to reply. So. That's like what we offer is so that they can still be engaged. Um, gotcha. But the application will be opened up and then how we work with like intern program, it's all dependent on like all the intern schedules. So we just meet outside of when they have classes. So next semester, if you're like accepted into the intern program, um, you don't really have to worry about like class conflicts or anything. Thank you. Um, I oh. think another thing, sorry, did someone have a question? Oh, no, I didn't have a question. I was just going to say, I think maybe this semester we might be able to record some of them too. So if you can't make it and you're still interested, um, I think maybe we can post them since everything is virtual. So that could be helpful for people who can't make it. Um, I think another thing to address, I know whenever I would uh, look to join an organization was the time commitment that would come with it. And so each semester it's very different. So like with the intern program, that's more of a structured like Elizabeth can talk about it, but usually about three times a week for an hour and a half or two covering each topic. But then from there, um, as Grace was talking about, it's as involved as you want to be other than like whatever client you're assigned to. So for example, if you're on the nonprofit consulting side, you'll have your weekly team meetings, but then you'll have your work outside of that that you have to balance as well. And then we have a full team meeting once a month. And then um, we also have virtual teams, which is another great way to get involved. So if you're part of a virtual team like marketing or the virtual finance team or virtual people team, um, that's sort of like a committee if you wanna look at it that way. And that's just another way to increase your involvement in the organization. And then also we have the project lead and managing director roles. So with each of those um, comes more of a time commitment obviously very rewarding work, but uh, that should sort of help gauge where like uh, the level of involvement comes and how much of a commitment that uh, you're making when joining the org. But it's a great time commitment with wonderful people. So it's fun. Yeah, baseline wise, so that would quantify as like two to three hours uh, per week as a consultant and then probably um, three to five hours a week as a intern. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, I just have one question. Um, so how has going all online on Zoom like affected the work that you guys do in terms of like, are there certain things that like you did last semester that you couldn't do anymore? Like how does interactions with the companies go and stuff like that as far as like all virtual? Yeah, thankfully how our org set up 
everything's transferable to be ran virtually. Like we're so able to run team meetings. We're so able to meet with clients virtually. We're still able to do all of our work. Um, I think the biggest impact is being able to actually like be together in meetings and like being able to like go to client sites and interact with the clients in person. So it kind of, it's not great that we can't like communicate with them directly in like a physical setting, um, but it's still like doable and we're still able to like carry on with like all the work we do. So thankfully we haven't been too impacted by COVID, but um, it is not as fun not having or not being able to uh, meet with the clients in person. Yeah, and it really just depends on the client about how much they're infected, affected by that. So like we talked about earlier, I'm on an Ecuador client this semester. So that was kind of going to be all virtual regardless, as much as we love to take our team to Ecuador. Um, so it just kind of depends semester to semester. Um, but real quick, before we get into any more questions, Julia is one of our members on the call, and she actually went through the intern process last semester, so she's going to talk to you guys just a little bit about her experience. Hey guys, so I think I'm the only not MD here, so um, like Grace said, I went through the intern um, program last semester, so I also like did some of this stuff online. Um, and like they were saying, like some of the stuff might be a little bit harder to do online, but my experience was the online stuff was actually super helpful because you had to learn how to use um, Zoom for like presentations and stuff for classes anyway. So it was really cool to have that extra skill on top of um, all the little skills that we were learning. Um, but some of the little uh, programs or trainings that we did within the intern program were super helpful. Um, I really personally liked the public speaking one, um, the Excel, and Tableau. I think those three were the most helpful for me. Um, so personally, I am not a very like tech savvy kind of person. So um, the Excel and Tableau ones were super helpful because they were able to break down um, the best ways to use it and the ways that we use it when we're in the org. Um, and then the public speaking one was super helpful just because we use it for like everything. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my experience with it. Um, if you guys have any questions, you guys can reach out to me since I kind of just went through it. But Grace, did you want me to add anything else? That's perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Julia. I think I live with Stash. I think she's right outside since she's one of the intern trainers. I didn't know if you want me to bring her in here. Oh, yeah. I mean, that would be great if she wants to talk about it. Let me grab her quick. Yeah. Any other questions while we wait? This. Yeah. Um, I have a question. How many interns usually, or how many people apply um, in one semester, and then how many interns do you guys take? Yeah, we've had semesters ranging from like 50 to 80 applicants each semester, and then I'd like to say we take as many like qualified applicants as there are, because we don't have like a hard cutoff of like, we can only take this many people into org. Like, if there's a lot of competitive candidates, we'll find a way to like field more projects or expand our projects to take them on. Um, I would say typically uh, we take anywhere from like eight to like 15 a semester um, as far as like number, but that's also super flexible depending on just however many great people or great candidates there are. Thank you. Yeah. Julie, any luck? No, she was sleeping. <laughs> okay. Um, well, yeah. If there's no other questions, Grace, you want to wrap things up? Yeah, perfect. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you think of any questions when you're going through your application, just reach out to our Gmail or our Instagram because Julia's all over that. So that's awesome. Um, and thank you guys so much for coming. This is recorded, so we're going to post the link on our YouTube. So feel free to share that with any of your friends that couldn't make it.
So thank you guys and have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so thank much. You.